Hello guys, how are you? Welcome to my channel, Cracking IELTS 9.0. So today I'm going to discuss this passage. Does education fuel economic growth? Right? So this is from Cambridge uh, book number 17, test four. As you can see on the screen, on the left side, I have the passage. Okay, we have pa uh, paragraphs from A to F, okay? And on the right side, I have the questions for you. Here, uh, I have questions 14 to 18 will be like matching, okay? Which section contains the following information, okay? So you need to match this sentence with the right paragraph, okay? And questions 19 to 22, they're like uh, fill in the blanks, one word answers, okay? And coming to questions 23 to 26, all these, they are like, uh, choose the right options. So they will give you five options and you have to pick two right options from that, okay? So yes, without wasting any time, let's uh, dive into the passage. Okay, guys. So uh, as I can see here, the first set is like matching, right guys? So for matching, uh, I have uh, some tricks, okay? So I request you all to watch the video till the end because in between, I will be giving away a lot of tips and tricks, okay? Especially for reading module. These tricks are really helpful for you to crack this IELTS reading, okay? I will tell you those strategies depending upon the question types, okay? So for each type of question, we have different uh, strategies, okay? So coming to this one first, this one says which section contains the following information, means we have to read these sentences and we have to write the paragraph name or the number or the alphabet right next to these, okay? So we have to match this. Now, my first tip is see guys so if you read the 14th question and you try to match with all the a to f paragraphs it takes a lot of time right like read the question number 14 and matching it with all the a to f paragraphs again come to number 15 Again, matching it with all those paragraphs come to 16, 17, 18. So if you do in this way, it will take, it will kill your time. Okay. It will take 20 minutes just to solve these five questions. Okay. So uh, my strategy is different now. Okay. So don't follow that. So in order to um, not waste any time, I'll apply something called the reverse strategy. Okay. Means my approach will be in a reverse way. Means I will read the paragraph A first. Okay, I will read A, I will understand the paragraph A and then I'll come to these questions. Okay, I will see if any question is matching with A or not. Okay, if something is matching, then I'll write A in front of that. Okay, then I'll come to B, I'll read the paragraph B, then I'll come to 14 to 18 questions, then I'll see if something is matching or not. Okay, so in this way, you will read the whole uh, passage. And also you can save a lot of time or you can answer these questions easily, right? I hope you understood my strategy, okay? So without wasting any time, let's read the first paragraph A. So over the last decade, a huge database about the lives of Southwestern German villages between 1600 and 1900 has been compiled by a team led by Professor Schillag at Cambridge University's Faculty of Economics, okay, right. So guys, uh, when you start reading the paragraph, you don't have to read it completely, fully. You don't have to read everything, okay. If it is a name, just write uh, Professor Yes, O, or Shilag, or Ogilvy, okay, at Cambridge University, okay. Like that, you have to read in a shortcuts, read quickly, okay, so that you save a lot of time, okay, especially the names, university names, uh, years, date of births, all these, okay, you have to read quickly, just, right? So it includes quote uh, records, okay? So he says the list, 
okay the database huge database it is like uh, it is compiled by this professor and it includes what court records guild ledgers okay uh, registers village censuses okay tax uh, lists and the most recent edition 9000 handwritten inventories listing over a million personal possessions belonging to ordinary women and men across three centuries okay so ogilvy the professor who discovered the inventories in the archives of two german communities 30 years ago believes they may hold the answer to a conundrum that has long puzzled economists the lack of evidence for a casual link between education and country's economic growth okay now he says there might be some link between the education and the economic growth okay now that we have read understood a now let's read the questions 14 to 18 okay now uh, an explanation of the need for research to focus on individuals with a fairly consistent income okay now did we read anything about individuals with a fairly consistent income no right i did not read anywhere so 14 is not at all matching with a right so i'll uh, take out 14 now let us move to the next one examples of the sources the database has been compiled from okay he says examples examples of the sources the database has been compiled from did we read any examples guys yes the database c uh, a huge database about the lives of southwest these has been compiled by this team what is that the database includes these court records ledgers registers censuses tax lists and also the handwritten inventories okay all these personal possessions all this is the database so the examples is this right what are the examples or these are the examples records registers lists okay so source database have been compiled from yes it is clear right so 15th one i think it should be uh, a because it's very uh, straightforward okay so i'll write a here in front of 15 okay guys all right see if you feel there is some uh, there might be some other uh, answer as well then keep a on hold okay you can keep you can write a and you can write it like this if there is some if you feel b is also matching with 15 then write b here okay so that we, you can see later uh, which one is close enough to the question okay right now let's move to the next passage it is b now So, as Ogilvy explains, education helps us to work more productively, invent better technology and earn more. Surely, it must be critical for economic growth. But, see here, use the word but. If you look back through the history, there is no evidence that having a high literacy rate made a country industrialize earlier. Okay, so he says there is no evidence here. Then, between 1600 and 1900, England had only a mediocre literacy, means average, medium. Okay, literacy rates by the European standards, yet its economy okay, grew fast Then it has first country to industrialize. During this period, Germany and this had excellent uh, literacy rates, but their economies grew slowly and they industrialized late. Modern cross-country analysis have also struggled to find evidence that education causes economic growth, even though there is plenty of evidence that growth increases education. Okay. Now, yeah, now she is analyzing this. She is explaining everything here, okay? She says that uh, education, there is no evidence that high literacy rate will be have more industries, right? He gave some examples also, like England has England had a medium literacy, but their industrialization was, it grew fast, economy. But Germany and Scandinavia, they had high literacy rate, but they don't have any industries. They grow very slowly, as they said. That's what she explains in B. Now, let us read again. An explanation of the need for research to focus on individuals with a fairly consistent income. No, I did not read anyone with a fairly consistent income in B. Okay. So, uh, this should be, uh, this should not be the one. And an account of one individual's refusal to obey an order. Okay. So, I did not read about any individual refusing an order in B. Okay. So, 16 also, strike out. A reference to a region 
being particularly suited to research into the link between education and economic growth. Okay. Uh, no, I did not uh, read about any particular region suitable to research. Okay. Uh, no. So the examples of items included in a list of personal possessions. Okay. Uh, there are no examples of the items. Okay. So I think B is also not matching with uh, anything here. Now, okay. Now let's move to the next paragraph. That is C. Okay. Uh, now, uh, so in the handwritten inventories that uh, Gil V is analyzing are the belongings of women and men at marriage, remarriage and death. From larger skins to Bibles, sewing machines. Okay, see he is telling here what are there in the list. Okay, item C. Uh, Bible sewing machines to the scarlet bodices, the villages, entire worldly goods are included. Okay, inventories of agricultural equipment, craft tools. Okay, ownership of books and education related objects like pens, slates, how people learned. In addition, the tax list includes the database record, the value of the farms, workshop, assets and debts. Okay, so signatures and people's estimates of their age indicate literacy and numeracy levels and count records reveal obstacles such as the activity of guilds that satisfy that stifle the industry. Okay. Now, previous studies usually had just one way of linking education with economic growth. The presence of schools and printing presses, perhaps a school enrollment or the ability to sign the names. According to uh, Ogilvy, the database provides multiple indicators for the same individuals, making it possible to analyze the link between literacy, uh, numeracy, wealth and industriousness for individual women and men over the long term. Okay. Now here I have read a lot of examples of what was there in the inventories, right? See, uh, in the handwritten inventories, okay? So what are them? See, I think I have read the question somewhere. Which question was that? 14, no, uh, 16, no, 17, no, 18. Examples of items included in the list of personal possessions. See this. So these are the Examples of the items, right? What are those examples? Bibles, see, sewing machines, okay, bodices, okay, agricultural equipment, craft tools, all these things, books, pens, slates, all these, they are the examples of items and the belongings means personal possessions, right? So I think C is exactly matching with 18. Right, guys? So what is the answer for 18? C. Okay, this is very easy one, right? Straight, it was like straightforward. Now again, so let's move to the next one, D. Now, Ogilvy and her team have building the vast database of material positions on top of their uh, full demogra uh, demographic reconstruction of people who lived in these two German communities. We can follow the same people and their descendants across 300 years of education and economic change, she says. Individual lives have unfolded before their eyes. Stories like that of 24-year-olds Anna Regina and this, who were chastised in 1707 for reading books in church instead of listening to the sermon, okay? So what is the meaning of chastiser? It means uh, maybe punishing them or scolding them, okay? Because they were reading a book instead of listening to the sermon, right? This tells us that uh, they were continuing to develop their reading skills at least a decade after uh, leaving school. Oh, okay. Now, the database also reveals the case of Juliana, a 50-year-old spinster living in this Black Forest of Wilberg, who was reprimanded in uh, 1752 by the local Weaver's Guild. Guild means the community. Okay, weavers community for weaving cloth and combining wool uh, counter to the guild ordinance. Okay, giving the counter to the guild ordinance means there is some ordinance she has opposed it, countered it. Okay, now Juliana continued taking jobs reserved for, for male guild members. She was summoned before the guild court and told to pay a fine 
equivalent to one third of a servant's annual wage. Okay, that's too high. So it was a small act of defense by uh, today's standards, but it reflects a time when in laws in Germany and elsewhere regulated people's access to labor markets. The dominance of guilds not only prevented people from using their skills, but also held back even the simplest industrial innovation. Okay. Mm, now here we had a lot of uh, examples, right? So these two women, Anna and Magdalena, we read about them and also about Juliana, we read. So what was this? So Juliana, she opposed something right here. She gave a counter to the guild ordinance, okay, because she was wearing cloth and combining it with wool, okay. So that's why she got a fine as well. Now, I, I think what was the question now? I think we read somewhere, yeah. An account of one individual's refusal to obey an order, yes. Ordinance means it's like agreement. Everyone has to obey, but she was giving a counter to the guild ordinance. Means, uh, yes, this is the right one. An account to, of one individual's refusal to obey an order. Okay. So this is D. Okay. Right. So uh, let's move to the next paragraph, that is E. Now, the data gathering phase of the project has been completed. And now, according to Ogilvy, it's time to ask the big questions. One way to look at whether education causes economic growth is to hold the wealth constant. OK, good. Wealth constant. This involves following the lives of different people with the same level of wealth over a period of time. If the wealth is constant, it is possible to discover uh, whether education was, for example, linked to the cultivation of new crops or to the industrial innovations like sieving machines. Okay, the team will also ask what aspect of education helped more people engage more with productive and innovative activities. Was it, for instance, literacy, numeracy, book ownership? years of schooling, was there a threshold level, a tipping point that needed to be reached at effect economic performance? Okay, so here in this paragraph, he's, he's uh, talking about one way to uh, look, the whole uh, wealth constant, right? Wealth constant, that is the key word here, guys. So this involves Okay, here, this involves following the lives of different people with the same level of wealth over a period of time. So if the wealth is constant, it is possible to discover whether education was linked to cultivation of new crops or industrial innovation. Okay, so wealth constant means what? It means individuals with a fairly consistent income. Yes, this is the keyword. So they have just paraphrased it. They are using synonyms now. So for this word, wealth constant, this is the... Consistent income is the keyword here. So, yes, guys, I think uh, this is the right one. So, 14th one should be E, okay? So, that was like pretty easy, like it was like straightforward, easy one. Now, we, I think we have one more, 17th one, and we have one paragraph, but let's read it, okay? Let's read it and we have to confirm that. Now, uh, Ogilvy hopes to start finding answers to these questions over the next few years. One thing is ready, already clear. She says relationship between education and economic growth is far from straightforward. German speaking Central Europe is an excellent laboratory of testing theories of economic growth. Between 1600 and 1900, literacy rates and book ownership were high and at the region uh, reprimanded poor. It was also the case that local guilds and merchant associations were extremely powerful and legislated against anything that undermined their monopolies. Okay, in villages throughout the region, guilds blocked the labor migration and rest, resisted changes that might reduce their influence. Okay. Okay, so early findings suggest that the potential benefits of education for the economy can be held back by uh, other barriers and this has implication for today, says Ogilvy. Huge amounts are spent uh, improving education in developing countries, but this spend can fail to deliver economic growth if restrictions block people, especially women and the poor, uh, from using their education in economically productive ways. If economic institutions are poorly set up, for instance, education can't lead 
to growth okay right so 17th one a reference to a region being particularly suited to research into link between education and economic growth i think yes what is that region i think yes a german speaking central europe is an excellent laboratory for testing the theories of economic growth yes so he was talking about this region german speaking central europe yes uh, link is uh, particularly suited to researchers it is suiting means it is it is the excellent laboratory for testing okay yes now yep so 17th one should be f okay right now let's move to the next set of questions that is one word fill in the blanks okay guys so fill in the blanks should be easy guys okay because he, here he will give you a heading and he will tell you which paragraph is that so that it will be easy for you guys okay so demographic reconstruction of german communities okay so database that give ogilvy and her team has a uh, compiled sheds light on the lives of a range of individuals as well as those of their dash over a 300 period i think we read about this in uh, paragraph d right here only we got the names for example the regina and magdalena all these names are here so i think this one this is related to paragraph D. Now, uh, light on the lives of a range of individuals as well as those of their dash. Now, uh, let us read it from here. We can follow the same people and their descendants across 300 years of educational and economic change. Wow. We can follow same people and their descendants. Okay means the lives of a uh, range of individuals as well as those of their descendants. Yes. Um, so yes, guys. So descendants should be the answer, okay? It's uh, pretty clear. All right. And uh, let's move to the next one. So Anna and Magdalena were reprimanded for reading while they should have been paying attention to a dash. What was that? So these two who were chastised in 1707 for reading books in the church instead of listening to the sermon. Okay. So they should have been paying attention to a sermon. Right? Okay. Next, there is also Juliana who came to the notice of the guild in 1752 for breaking their rules. As a punishment, she was later given a dash. So punishment. So when Juliana continued ta uh, taking jobs reserved for male guild members, she was summoned before the court and told to pay a fine equivalent. Yes, so she was paying a fine. So she was later given a fine, right? Hmm. Next, cases like this illustrate how the guilds could prevent dash and stop uh, skilled people from working. Okay. Now, let us read this one. Now, uh, it is a small act of defense by today's standards, but it reflects a time when laws in Germany uh, regulated people's access to labor markets. The dominance of guilds not only prevented people from using their skills, means stopped skilled people from working, but also held back even the simplest industrial innovation. Okay. So cases held, see, held back means prevent. These two are the keywords. Okay. These are you need to match the keywords. So cases like this illustrate how guilds could prevent industrial innovation, but it is only one word. So what will you write? You should write innovation here, okay? Okay, so this could prevent the innovation and stop skilled people from working, okay? Next, so let's move to the next set of questions, okay? Now, which two of the following statements does the writer make about literacy rates? 
in the section B. So he's talking about section B. Let's go to section B directly. Okay, without wasting any time. Okay, guys. Now, uh, very little research has been done into the link between high literacy rates and improved earnings. So education helps her to work more, uh, invent better technology, surely must be critical for her. But if you look back through history, there's no evidence that having a high literacy rate made a country industrialized earlier. Okay. He says, he says very little research has been done. Very little research. But here, he, he did not talk about any research, okay? So, cancel A, right? And literacy rates in Germany between 1600 and 1900 were very good. Now, between 1600 and 1900, England had only mediocre literacy. But, see, during this period, Germany and Scania has excellent literacy rates. See this. Germany had excellent literacy rates. So, literacy rates in Germany were very good. Yes, true. So, B is one answer, okay? So, you can write B here. B is clearly there, okay? Direct answer. Now, there is strong evidence that high literacy rates in modern world result in economic growth. No, we just read, right? See? If you look back through history, there is no evidence that having a high literacy rate made a industrialized earlier. There is, here, you said there is strong evidence. No. Strike out C. C is wrong. C is not true. Next. England is a good example of how high literacy rates helped a country industrialize. Now, England had only mediocre literacy rates by European standards. But here he says England is a good example of how high literacy rate. No, it's completely opposite he's talking about. So, strike out D as well. Okay. Now, economic growth can help to improve the literacy rates. So, reverse here. I think the last sentence has it, right? Modern cross-country analysis have also struggled to find evidence that education causes economic growth, even though there is a plenty of evidence that growth increases education. So growth can improve literacy rate. Yes, the last sentence is exactly this. So E should be one of the answers, okay? Right. So B and E here. Now, let's move to the next question. Write the correct letters. So, which two of the following statements that the writer make in section F about guilds in German-speaking Central Europe between 16 and 1900s? Okay, let's go to section F. Okay. They helped young people to learn a skill. The first one is, they helped some young people. Mm, did he talk about any young people here? Just read the paragraph once. I'm just glancing it. I'm just giving it a glance. Where is the word young people or adolescents or youngsters? I cannot see anywhere. Young people. Okay. So strike A out. Finished. Okay. Now, they were opposed to people moving to an area for work. Okay. They were opposed to people moving to an area. I think we read about some migration here, right? So between 16 and 19, literacy rates and book ownership are high, yet again, region demanded poor. It was also case that local guilds and merchant associations were extremely powerful and legislated against anything that undermined their monopolies. In villages throughout the region, guilds blocked the labor migration. See, guilds blocked the labor migration and resisted changes that might reduce their influence. So labor migration means people moving to an area for work. Yes. B is true. Mm, so one of the answer is B. Mm. Next, they kept better records than guilds in other parts of the world. So did he talk about the guilds in other parts of the world here? Um, I'm just giving a glance. Huge amounts are spent in developing countries. Uh, deliver economy. Education. No, he did not talk about guilds in other parts of the world. He, he only spoke about this. So cancel C. Okay. Next. They opposed practices that threatened their control over a trade. Yes. Yes. 
I think it's the same sentence here. Okay, it was also the case the local guilds and merchants are extremely powerful and legislated against anything that undermines their monopoly. Yes. See, legislated against means they are opposing practices that threaten their control, undermining their monopoly, and also registered changes that might reduce their influence. Means, yes, D is clearly the answer. For me, D is the one more answer. It is clear. Next, the last option, they predominantly consist of wealthy merchants. No. He did not talk about any wealthy merchants here. He is just talking about the guilds and normal merchants, right? Uh, I think yes. Yes, I think uh, that is the end of today's uh, session, guys. I hope uh, my tips and tricks are useful to you guys. These are really helpful to crack the IELTS test. And if you can follow these tricks, uh, you can score nine bands easily. Okay. You just have to give 20 minutes for each passage and you have to be fast. And you should be knowing some synonyms and uh, meanings of the few words. That's it. You will crack the reading module so easily. Okay. So I hope, um, uh, I uh, hope all the best for you guys. And please do your best. Practice as many uh, passages as possible because only then only you can understand the uh, exam range. What is it? Okay. This will uh, tell you uh, how confident you are and uh, how much knowledge do you have. So try to solve as many passages as you can, guys. So let's meet in some other passage. If you like my video, please like, share and subscribe. Please share it with your friends who are trying to uh, crack the IELTS test. So let's meet in another video. Thank you.